Looking at specific genus and species of isopods, each with slightly differing care needs, we've produced a series of videos based on the species specifically. Firstly, where it comes from, the habitat it might prefer, and moving on to any care best practices for this species, which again may differ, if only ever so slightly in some cases, from a very similar species, or at least a species from a similar location or appearance. The Porcelio magnificus are usually classed as one of the largest terrestrial isopods available for many keepers currently, with the Porcelio hoffmansegi being of a very similar size in length, of which they can both top out at around 4 centimetres, making them a very impressive species to keep. Also, still noticeable within the larger bioactive setups, especially where reptiles may also be a feature. The Porcelio magnificus coloration is usually a striking orange with sometimes a white fringe. The origins of the Porcelio magnificus come from Spain within the Mediterranean. We draw from this both soil composition in the area, being moderately dry, heading to the point of being arid, and warm in temperature. So this would lead to our substrate, including any suitable decor, humidity and temperature of the setup, being a mirror as best we can from the original environment despite many isopods being quite versatile. Based on the original location, the temperature should be kept between 20 to 24 degrees centigrade. As locations is drier and arid, there should be a mirror of this within the setup. Using sphagnum moss as a hydration station, this would allow a gradient of water or humidity, but keeping it to the drier side. The cork bark flat should provide suitable hides. For large colonies, you will need a much larger container as overcrowding of this large species might induce stress. Due to the size of this species, their calcium and protein requirements would be much more than the smaller sized isopods. As always, limestone is preferable to cuttle bone. The protein can be supplemented by utilising dried shrimp. The young of this species can be especially protein hungry. Like most isopods, they will predominantly eat decayed hardwood and dried hardwood leaves, but fruits and vegetables will both be enjoyed. The isopods can be seen to be making great mothers and will actively protect their young. They have been known to breed after eight months. Breeding can be quick with average sized broods. This species shows sexual dimorphism with the tails in the males being usually much longer than the females in comparison. Males, however, can be quite territorial towards other males and juveniles, so space within your setup is a must. Thank you for watching. If you have found this video useful, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. This will give you updates on new releases of a similar nature. This is very helpful to us. We do appreciate it. Check out our social media links found within the description of this video. We also love discussion, especially if you have another point of view. Please add your comments. It helps us improve our content. We do have plans to make many more videos in the future, however these might have content updates as our work progresses. Our videos might be updated and re-uploaded at any point as our research progresses. Thank you once again.